spousal abuse is not only physical. I lost a baby because of the abuse. How did you respond to the abuse? I made sure that I had no marks in my face. There are a lot of women in Jamaica who are very good at keeping it a secret. When a man starts to hit you the first time, you are so shocked. We're discussing a very important issue, the topic of domestic abuse, domestic violence. So how long were you in that situation? I, got, I was abroad studying and I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And um, you're laughing. We're so in love and for love at first sight. <laughs> yes, you know, and, and I remember somebody saying to me, you know, that was your problem. You fell in love rather than growing into love. Oh. I must admit that shortly after we got married, the abuse started. Mm. I mean, almost immediately. And there was no sign that he. Oh, had there that. was, but when you're, you're in, so love, in love, you see the signs. <laughs> There were. I have a very good friend who, who lived close to us where I was studying. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying to me, Alun, it's not a good idea to get married to him. The truth is, I could see mm -hmm. that there was going to be abuse. But I never took that on. You, you go into a relationship thinking that you can change a man. Well, let me tell you all something. It doesn't work. You can't change them. Mm -hmm. You can't change their history. You can't change their cultural approach to life, which in my case, because I was married to somebody from the Central African Republic, and culturally, they are different. So he thought it's something acceptable? In his he thought it was acceptable. Yeah. I didn't. And I made up my mind very quickly mm -hmm. so that my marriage didn't last well, it lasted longer than it ought to have. <laughs> because I kept, when, even when I came home to Jamaica, I kept going back. Because mm -hmm. he was doing his PhD. That's now I want to say this. He was doing his PhD. So you're talking, you, you understand the level mm -hmm. I'm talking at, eh? And it was just horrible because in addition to, you know, spousal abuse, it's not only physical. The mental abuse is just as bad. Our worst, I've heard. And probably worst. Mm -hmm. mm? So it's, it's physical abuse as well as mental abuse. Mm -hmm. And when I decided that I, my marriage was finished, let me tell you when I decided. I lost a baby mm -hmm. because of the abuse. But I must tell you, and I'm going to say this and it will sound terrible, but I prayed to God that... I would lose the child. Because you didn't want any more time. Because to I knew that I was going to have to leave him. I also knew that the baby would be the attachment. And I also knew that I would have to walk away from that child. And I didn't want to have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But I, he beat me and I lost the child. How did you respond to the abuse? Did you? I covered my face. I mm -hmm. made sure that I had no marks in my face. Oh. I didn't respond, except I took a knife, mm -hmm. and I knew everywhere I was where that knife was, and I said, if he beat me again, I was going to kill him. And then I said, no, I'm not going to go to prison for this man. Mm -hmm. And so I decided not to, not to, you know, until I physically removed myself. I was constantly. Mm -hmm. When it happened the first time, did you think that it would I was happen shocked. again? I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I said, this is not happening to me. Look at me. How could any man think they're going to beat me? I was bigger than this. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's what happens. At first, you are shocked. You cannot believe it is happening. And then you start to, you start to make excuses for why? for why it is happening and you you, you you try to you begin to change you know mm -hmm. you begin to change to make sure you almost become a mouse uh, you don't want him to see you you don't want to I mean in my case he look at me everybody calls to me and I returned I call to everybody I smile at people and if we went to a restaurant and I'm walking to the table and people are smiling and I'm smiling back at them 
when we get home, he wants to know how I know those people in the restaurant and why I'm smiling at them. And then I would get a, as they say in Jamaica, I don't know if I can say this on TV, <laughs> a boss ass <laughs> over it. Yeah. You know? Did anybody know. notice, like figure out that? No. Something, you were very good at keeping it a as secret. Very good at keeping it a secret. And there are a lot of women in Jamaica who are very good at keeping it a secret. When I first spoke about my experience, mm -hmm. A couple of things happened. First of all, my parents were hearing this for the first time. My brothers and sisters were hearing this for the first time. They thought that it was just mental abuse. Mm. They would never have believed physical. that it was physical abuse. So it was a shocker. And then the second thing is that I was a senator. Mm -hmm. People in my position, I was the CEO of COK. I was doing this, that, and everything. People in my position are don't... Are not a part of these are not a, a, Much less to talk about it. <laughs> yes. No. And what I learned is that I made myself available to persons who would want to speak to somebody. Mm -hmm. Most persons wanted to speak to somebody, but they didn't want to speak publicly. Mm. They didn't want people to know about it. And... We don't have a lot of support. Now I think there is more. More and more people, more are. And more people are out there giving support. There's the Women's Center. There's Women's, Women's mm -hmm. Inc. And to tell you the truth, it took me eight years. Eight years. Eight years after I got out of the situation and after I had counseling mm -hmm. to be able to speak publicly about it. I didn't allow anybody to know this was happening. Yeah. Women do face a lot of guilt, shame, and it prevents them from speaking and even sometimes leaving. The leaving is a problem because, unfortunately, a lot of women do not have the wherewithal mm -hmm. to be able to leave. I have spoken to a number of women who want to leave, but who just don't see how they could leave with their children. Mm -hmm. What were they going to do? Where were they going to live? I've even spoken with women who own the home that they're living in because the man is just a freeloader. So can you imagine, on top of being a freeloader, you're actually abusing the woman who is providing. And she can't put you out. <laughs> and the putting out is a real problem. I mean, I've dealt with two persons in the last week who are in that situation. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges that women face is the stigma of saying, I have left my husband because my husband has beaten me. The stigma, not stigma, the challenge of saying, how am I going to look after myself mm -hmm. and my, my children, if there are children involved? And so in high society Jamaica, you have women who are abused and who stay in the abusive relationship because of the trappings mm -hmm. of being married and all of that. In middle class Jamaica, it exists. In the poorest of the poor in Jamaica, it also exists. Mm -hmm. So abuse does not discriminate in terms of class, class Status. Color, st status, <laughs> money, education, background. it does not. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you, I mean, I know of, of people who are in that situation. What did you learn about yourself in counseling? I learned about, and a lot of women are going to say this. You hear women who have never been abused, they will say, no man could have ever lick me. What I would do? Let me tell you, sisters. When a man starts to hit you the first time, you are so shocked. You cannot believe it is happening. And then you start to think it's something I have done. Mm -hmm. So all the women who say, man can't lick me, I hope you never have to deal with that. So after my marriage broke up and I decided that's it and so on, I, I got counseling. And I remember the counselor saying, to, you know, you ask questions. Why does this happen? Why would this happen to me? Look at me. Why? And the counselor said to me, there's a reason why it happened. And I'm going to tell you that knowing you, you are going to speak about this matter so that you can help others. 
it took me eight years to get to that point because mm -hmm. I first of all had to acknowledge what had happened to me. I had to look at release the shame, releasing the shame. I had to look at releasing the thought that it was something you that did. I did that caused it. It took me a while to understand. It wasn't anything that I did. I didn't do anything. It was him. Mm -hmm. What's that one thing you, you tell women, though? Women who are in that situation. Women who are in that situation. What would you have loved to hear when you were in your situation that you would like to share to someone now? That you must remember that it is not you. Mm -hmm. That the shame and the disgrace is not on you because it is not something that you have brought on yourself. It is on him. Do not ever make any excuses for that man. How pleased are you now with the different movements happening in Jamaica? Because as a society back then, I don't think you had an avenue, a platform where people were even speaking about no, these things. No. But no. There are many avenues now. People mm -hmm. are talking about it more. But you see, we talk about it and people understand that there are places where you can get help. Mm -hmm. But it's always a very personal thing because you have, the woman has to get to a point where you accept, I am not embarrassed by this. It is not my fault. And I want to get out of this situation mm -hmm. before you will even consider speaking to somebody. So a woman has to be at that place. Right. Um, and if they talk to, talk to you or talk to me, I have to help them to work through what is needed to get to that place. Right. Because you don't just up. You and might go. have been. Yes. You'll go back. You'll sometimes. go back. A lot ready. of times. You're, you're not, not, not You're not emotionally ready mm -hmm. for the changes right. that will occur um, when you get out of the situation. So it, has, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. It is a problem in the country. And it's very debilitating for so many of our women. And, and I want to say this. People always say, why do I only talk about abuse of women? Because abuse of men take place. It is true. And probably for the men, it's even worse. Because men their are ego, to talk about their it. ego really will are. not allow them to accept. You know the Jamaican mm -hmm. saying, Lord, you make a woman beat you. Yeah, so yes. I admit that abuse of men is taking place. And, and they are going through, situation. they're going through all the same symptoms all the same challenges mm -hmm. that an abused woman would go through mm -hmm. but it's very hard it is probably most harder for them to talk about it Thank i'm you. sure a lot of women uh, would feel quite inspired just listening to you and know that listen you can get over it there's life after abuse there is there is life after abuse but you need to get help get help yes all right. So it, there's the, the physical moving yourself away from it, but there's also the emotional assistance that mm -hmm. you need. I'm a firm believer in getting counseling. I think black people self, just to get Jesus, take it to the Lord in prayer. And that <laughs> is good too. That is good, but, but we need you, to get some professional in the flesh. Some, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a dear. pleasure. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I am Sadiqa Dyerum. See you next time.